I am Vivian Reed and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. This was a very trying time in my career and I had many more times like this one as well. Now it's opening night and everyone's so excited. The press is all there and everything. And opening night went flawlessly. We had a grand opening night. Then the reviews came out for the show. And they singled me out. They loved the show, but they singled me out. Well, at that point, I noticed that various members of the cast stopped speaking to me. In Washington, same thing. We had a great opening, great, great previews, great opening. And the reviews came out and singled me out again. And this one particular time, I'm up stairs on the third floor visiting with one of the cast members. And we're talking, and I hear, well, we all heard, Vivian and the hairdresser are fucking. Vivian and the hairdresser are fucking. What? And it was the leading lady, the lady that I fought for to come into the show. Then an article came out in the Amsterdam News, our main black newspaper up here in Harlem. I guess, I, I guess it's still in existence. And the article didn't have a writer, it was a ghost writer. No name. And in this article, it went on to say that I had the best arrangements, the best costumes because the musical director was my manager, which was totally not true. And it just went on and on and on. Well, when we did our last show, in Washington, I had a nervous breakdown. I didn't understand what was going on. What did I do to cause this, to cause any of this? So management sent me back to New York just to take some days off. The show was heading to Chicago, but there was a few days off in between. So they said, Vivian, go back to New York, because most of, most of the people, most of the cast was heading straight to Chicago, but they wanted me to go back to New York just to chill, which I did. Well, when I arrived in Chicago, I really kind of didn't know what state I was in. I really didn't have a clue. But after we opened, that opening night, Billy Wilson came backstage and came into my dressing room and he said, Vivian, what is it? And I said, what do you mean? He said, you're not yourself on stage. He said, it's not you. You're not performing like you usually perform. He said, I don't see any joy around you like we're used to seeing. I didn't have an answer for him. Maybe I was numb to all of this. <laughs> and then the reviews came out. I didn't run away with the reviews in Chicago. I didn't. Oh, they gave me wonderful, wonderful reviews, but it wasn't the kind of reviews that I had been getting. But I was numb to all of this. So it was in, like an underground newspaper, and I still have it put away. I always go back and I read this from time to time. That particular newspaper devoted three paragraphs to me, to Vivian Reed, saying that I was a great singer, great dancer, all of these 
things, but that my performance was as empty as the top tier in the theater. They also went on to say I was performing like just biding my time waiting to get my paycheck for the week. You know what? It was probably true because I had let various members of the cast, this leading lady, take my joy. I allowed that to happen. And not only was that happening, this particular leading lady, and I didn't know about this until a couple people came and told me what was going on. Before the show would start, she was out in front of the theater, standing near a lamp post, saying things like, oh, they think I'm jealous of the young star in our show. I'm not jealous of her. And stuff like, my dick is dragging the ground. What? My dick is dragging the ground? What the hell does that mean? So to be funny, a couple of my friends had a t-shirt made up saying this, my dick is dragging the ground. Of course, I never wore it. Well, it all came to a head when we were in Toronto. Toronto didn't particularly love the show at all. So there were very few people in the audience, and I have a funny to tell you about that. <laughs> oh, is it funny? But this leading lady, she actually started interrupting some of the scenes with saying dialogue that wasn't even in, wasn't even in the script. She would just make up stuff and mess up whoever was speaking at that particular moment. I was sitting at my table and I could hear all of this over the PA system and she was doing this. She had been doing this for several nights. And after the show was over, I went to her and just basically cursed her out, crying and cursing at the same time. And there were some of the cast members who were holding me, but I, I let it all out. I was screaming and yelling. And <sighs> Remember that promise I said I had made that if she acted up, that I wouldn't say anything, wouldn't do anything? I will never do that again. Because I, in general, generally I don't allow people to just talk to me any way they want. I always address it, but I didn't this time. I didn't. And Ashton Springer promised me that he would find out who put this article in the Amsterdam News. And it turned out that it was this leading lady, the lady that I fought for. So another thing I didn't know, she had taken to going in at intermission in the lobby where people were congregating and was talking to herself, just mumbling. And a lot of it was about me. And so that's when they decided that they were going to let her go, which they did. And they brought in Josephine Premise, who then finished the tour and then opened with us on Broadway. You know, uh, it, it's funny because I cried so much during this period. I just didn't understand. I didn't understand how could God have given me this talent and it caused other people so much grief. I didn't understand that. I cried a lot. I mean a whole lot. So after we closed in Toronto, we went back to Philadelphia. And I was back to singing my ass off, acting my ass off, and dancing my ass off. Ashton said, I see you're back. 
Yes, I'm back. You know what, guys? And to you performers, don't ever let anyone take your joy. I allowed them to take my joy, to come here, to play with this. <laughs> that will never happen again. But let me tell you the funny now. Let me tell you the funny thing that happened. I don't do drugs. I don't do drugs at all. Are you kidding me? But we were up in Toronto. Very few people in the audience. And one of the guys from the cast came up to me, and he would always go off and smoke somewhere. And then he would come back and tell Gene, oh, this person I get this part from never has any good stuff. So on the last day, he said to me, come on, Vivian, you want to take a little bit? I had never done that. And I thought, oh, what the hell? Baby, what? When that overture hit, I was in another world. What? It was awful. First time I had ever done anything. I have never done anything like that since. But at that particular time, I was ha, ha, ha. Well, somehow, when Georgia Brown started, I said, no gal maid has got a shade on uh, sweet Georgia Brown. Uh, da, 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 no gal maid has got a shade on sweet Georgia Brown. Uh, da, 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 no gal. I sang no gal maid has got a shade on sweet Georgia Brown at least eight or nine times. And don't forget, that number... The, the choreography is to the words of that number. It's to the lyrics. So I forgot the choreography, the lyrics, started crying on stage. The two dancers were literally leading me around the stage. It was just awful. The stage manager is standing in the wings, and when I came off, he said, you are hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what am I going to do for God bless the channel? <laughs> so he took me to my dressing room. He said, how could you? This is not you. I said, what am I going to do about God bless the child? He said, well, by that time, you should be down. You'll, you, you'll, you will have come down a little bit. <sighs> so by the time God bless the child came around, I did come down. I was fine. And I was able to get through the tap. But Lord have mercy, why did I do such a dumb thing? I was so glad that that did not happen in New York. I don't do drugs. I mean, I don't knock anybody who smokes pot if that's what you want to do, but that's just not my thing. Why did I do that? Lesson learned. <laughs> anyway, just wanted to leave you with that. Me and my one-time pot smoking day or evening. All right, so listen. The next part, we're going to talk about coming into New York and the big opening at the Anta Theater. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like, and don't forget to tell your friends. I don't know if you should tell them about my pot smoking day. <laughs> anyway, see you next time.